You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music can mean but one thing. It is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. in my current time zone, the eastern time zone. Yes, it is time once again to talk about a little bit of volatility. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com. If I sound a wee bit different, and I probably do, is because I'm coming at you not from the Chi-Town studio, no, but from the southern studio here in sunny and ridiculously warm triple-digit Orlando, Florida, for the STA National Conference. You know, this conference has been evolving over the years. When I first went years ago, I was kind of the only options guy in the room. Uh, these days, it's like a mini OIC that most of the exchanges are here. Most of the options personnel are down here. So it's, be, it's becoming much more of an options event. You'll see as you hear some of the shows. Some of the shows have already hit, obviously, from uh, what we've been recording down here in the studio at STA. More to come. It'll be hitting the pro side first. So some of those are already making their way to the pro. If you want to check those out early, of course, get access to options oddities, which is already actually up on the feed as we speak now. I had an early options oddities today, as well as so much else. The optionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. As we learn who's joining us on the old program today. First, let's go out to the hinterlands of Chicago, where we are joined once again by the once future and present Dr. Vicks. He moonlights in a little bit of V-Stocks. Uh, Mr. Dr. Vicks, welcome back to the show, sir. As always, thrilled to be here. Um, I'm actually kind of glad I'm not down there in the um, down there in Florida with you. It sounds very uncomfortable. I mean, it's like 90 here in Chicago. It was so, freaking hot. Whenever they had a, yeah. an event outside, people were, I think, I think melting is the technical term. Yes, it was very yeah. hot. You know, down, down there, it's not so much the heat is just how freaking hot it is. You know, it is a swamp, so that doesn't yeah. help. That doesn't help with the uh, with the tr when it's triple digits it's and the humidity. You're in a swamp. Yeah, yeah, then you're uh, then you're really feeling it. I don't know if he's feeling it down where he is. Let's find out. Let's go out now to the southern volatility mecca, known as Austin, home of last year's RMC, where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, uh, welcome back to the show. Are you going to RMC this year? I believe it's in Utah. I don't think so but you never know maybe i will you can walk to utah from texas right i mean it's like a, it's like a oh yeah it's super walk, close right? right down the street right down the street austin super to utah. super close that's how that geography of the western states works right you just yes. walk right over there nothing nothing to see over there as we keep on rolling ourselves listeners into the volatility review It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All 
All right, everybody, let's get down to business. Time for the volatility review, the portion of the show where we break down what's trading and what's trending and what's uh, going on from unusual activity and all sorts of fun perspectives in the world of vol. And of course, we got another hot one in store for us this week. It was Fed week after all. That usually tends to drive some action, drive some paper. This week, no exception, of course. A half point coming in hot from Powell and company this week. Most people were leaning towards a quarter of a point, even at this time a week ago. We did see a pretty marked shift in the Fed watch in the intervening days leading into the session where all of a sudden half point was becoming more and more in favor. And uh, clearly that was the right choice in hindsight, at least from a lining up with Powell perspective. Market had some fun digesting it at first. It rallied. Then we saw a pretty aggressive sell-off towards the end of the session. And then, of course, yesterday, the bulls just got the bit in their teeth again, and everything was up strong. S&P north of 5,700, new all-time highs, uh, close to across the board out there. And then coming into today, it seemed like maybe uh, the bears were going to turn it down a notch, and uh, they came in hitting everything. We got back below 5,700 again, which just saying that out loud sounds crazy. Uh, It wasn't that long ago we were threatening 5,100 in the other direction, so breaking through 5,700. Oh, my God. Dogs and cats living together. But we did that this morning. Got down to around 5,680 or so before. It looks like the bulls have the bit in their teeth again, uh, turning the S&P back around. s and is still red right now, off about 0.15%. Uh, the NASDAQ still red, off about a third of a percent. But it was red across the board. The Dow has now ticked green, up 0.15%. So we'll see if it's one of those days where the early sell-off was a head fake or perhaps a, a portent of things to come. VIX at about a 15.85 when we kicked off the show. So back at a 15 handle, that puts it down about two-thirds of a point from where we were this time a week ago. It seemed like we did a lot of living over the span of that intervening week, but back to 15.85. Did you have a VIX of the 15 handle, listeners? I guess we'll find out in the crystal ball in a little bit. A VIX 97, so back down from triple digits, but just ever so briefly down about three points from where it was this time last week. So a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with the once future and present Dr. Vicks. First off, your thoughts on our pal Powell and company, uh, you know, exceeding expectations, at least from a week ago and going to full half point and the market's reaction from there. And what else is catching your eye on the ball front this week, sir? The derivative markets were pricing in 50 basis points for some time. And I know um, I know most people take a look at the CME group one. Uh, the one on Bloomberg, I feel like, is a bit more accurate because it's taking in more than just the CME markets. And that one that one's been pointing to fifty basis points for a couple of weeks. And I feel like the the true volatility event would have been you know, which is real easy to say in 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 hindsight, but I was quoted in the press saying, that if they did face 50 basis points, it probably wouldn't be a huge reaction and the market would uh, consider it somewhat of a relief because that's what the market wants. Uh, and I, do, I mean, Powell has snuck this in every once in a while, but he he doesn't surprise us that much. You know, I think if you're betting on Powell surprising you, um, 19 times out of 20, you're 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 going to be disappointed. Because um, as as much as the poor guy gets criticized, I mean he he is very straightforward with with you know pretty much here's what we're gonna do. I mean I think almost to the point where people start to have to make some stuff up just to make him more interesting. Um, kind of kind of like you know me versus Mark Sebastian. You got to make stuff up about me because I'm nowhere near as interesting as Mark Sebastian. Does he have raging head trauma? I don't think so. So there you go. Bam. No, he doesn't. You got, you're, yeah. you're winning. You're winning right there, sir. But I how dare, on that one. How dare you imply that there are markets outside of CME Treasury, Mark? What are you saying, sir? There's no such thing. I, I am a, um, I'm a free agent, um, and uh, I still get nasty notes from, from you know, the exchanges every once in a while. But, you know, I just call it as I see it. And I'm not bad mouthing CME. I'm just saying that the... And and it's a great tool, especially uh, because it's free. But um, it, it gives you a little bit different forecast than uh, some of the option-adjusted spread stuff that you can get off of uh, Bloomberg. Yeah, you're right. It was because even as recently, I think, as our ball views last week, it was it, still leaning almost. It was really like yeah, yeah, seventy-five percent yeah. towards the quarter basis point. 
or 25 basis points. It wasn't until later that we saw that swing closer to 50. I was surprised at how, how, how strong it was towards 25 basis points, quite frankly. So, yeah, interesting stuff out there this week from Powell and company. We go down now to the land of the Southern Volatility Mecca, which we have established earlier in the show is just a, a short, brisk walk from Utah, so he could easily walk to RMC. Uh, Mr. 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 Meatball, we talked a little bit yesterday on the option block. If you have any further thoughts on what Powell and company did, surprise, not a surprise, and then B, uh, what caught your eye in the volatility tumult that followed, sir? Yeah, you know, um, I, I, you know, typically the first reaction is the wrong one, and we were ended up kind of up and then down. Um, you know, going into options expiration, I'm not surprised that we were a little bit bullish. Uh, going into quadruple witching, especially coming out of this. But you got to wonder, um, you know, I actually would have liked to seen a quarter basis point relative to a half. I think the half tells me that they're a little more worried about the economy than maybe they're letting on. Uh, and a, a quarter would have just said, hey, you know, we're bottoming. Now we're going to slowly move things. Uh, you know, I was looking back. I, I have not seen a lot of precedent for a we, uh, you know, we were, we raised 14 months ago and now we're already going to a quarter basis point, uh, many times. I, I don't know, Russell, if you've seen anything like that historically, uh, other than, you know, when there's been some issues. So it just has me, just has me thinking a little bit, maybe, uh, maybe they're a little more nervous than they're letting on. And I'm, I'm wondering if the market, once we're free of expiration is going to start wondering the same thing. That was the concern, right? Half basis point signals. Look out below because there's there's more lurking in there than perhaps we know. Uh, speaking of be, looking at the past as prologue, I saw an interesting write-up the other day and maybe kind of just, just shake my head like, what are we doing? It was an article entitled, I believe it was, How NVIDIA Has Performed During Past Rate Cuts. And I was like, really? Are we doing this? When's the la- First off, when's the last time we had a big rate cut like this? And then C or B, it was a very different NVIDIA back then talking about mobile chips and maybe a little bit of crypto versus now all AI, yet they're somehow trying to tie the two together. But uh, that's where we are right now, listeners. Uh, As we keep on rolling, let's see where we are in the volatility surface, shall we, listeners? And spoiler alert, uh, we're down a little bit, but not a ton. We had a SEP, of course, rolling off the board this week, so October slotting into that pole position. And coming into showtime, it was down, but down slightly. In fact, we're down about the same in the OC and the NOB cycle. Both of them down right around two-tenths of a point. Uh, scrolling on out here through uh, the rest of the term structure all the way into almost halfway through next year. And we and once again, there's no uh, no 20 handles to be found. Looks like we top out at almost a 19, 1880 back in or out in May of next year. But outside of that, uh, not a heck of a lot going on. Mr. Mister Dr. Bixer, what's catching your eye in a gentle drift lower on the term structure this week? It, you know, the the one thing that, that I was kind of thought we would see, uh, I didn't want to make the bold, bold prediction, uh, but I thought we might get OC below November after the Fed was out of the way. And, and that that just didn't happen yet. It'll get there, but that just didn't happen yet. So 20 cent spread as I look at it right now. Uh, and, and I don't know what I'm going to be fixated on after October expiration. What will I look at? Yeah, I know. What are we going to do here? We've been, we've been I mean, talking that's about... all I've been talking about for <laughs> six months. I'm, I'm, I, I keep expecting somebody in the chat to pop in there and go, Russell, please freaking talk about something else. Um, I will tell I will tell you that the December discount to November uh, is a little interesting. Uh, it's only you know it's about a dime right now, and normally you know no, normally we see a bigger divot than that. But I, I wonder if, and and I was watching my buddy uh, Cat Temp on Joe Rogan, and they were talking about potential post uh, election uh, physical volatility. Will there be pallets of bricks dropped off in the big cities again, and all that kind of stuff? Um, so you know, maybe December is holding up a little bit more, again due to the election uncertainty, and and what I do think it's going to take to get that out of there is just a decisive outcome one way or another. I'm I'm personally at the point where I just want to know that night and I don't care which two of these awful people ends up being the being president. 
do I'm, I see you're with me in the none of the above camp. <laughs> but it's a somebody, very much- hey, hey, somebody told me they were voting for me yesterday. Oh, right in. There you go. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I might register I like to write it. Right. And and yeah, and, and Mark Sebastian, you actually know this person. So Oh really? Um, well, I, but, now, you just gave me idea. Now I've got a candidate I can believe in. That's it. There you go. <laughs> there we go. There People always go. tell me they, they, they send me a few write-ins every time, but uh, I have yet to count up my my write-ins. I might actually have a handful, maybe a dozen votes for president. So there we go. That might count for something. And maybe I can get a free coffee at Starbucks. But uh, Mr. Yeah, you're right. The the pallets. I forgot about the pallets of bricks. Yes, that was that was all the talk in Chi Town leading into DNC. There come the pallets of bricks. Uh, hopefully we don't see. It. But maybe you know what? We had fun back in 2016. I don't know, Mr. Doctor Vic. Should we do another live election night special? It was kind of fun last time, even if I've, it's a I've little. I've locked alarm. it out. Did you I'm, block? I've, it got, out? I've got right. it on my calendar already. Oh, okay. Look so. at you. You're, you're planning yeah, my schedule no. for me. So there we go. Well, oh. Yeah. You know, I just kind of assumed you would want to. So <laughs> it, it is go. one of those years this year. Yeah. Are we going to see yeah. the? I mean, listeners, if you want some fun, go back and check out in the archives. Maybe we'll repost it. Uh, make it easier to find the 2016 live special that. That Russell and I did. Even that's why I Joe I talk about when people say they know who's going to win right now. We didn't even know even that night. Remember, Trump oh. still seemed like a distant long shot. Hillary was still in the lead until you came on the show. I think it was you came on the show partway through and said, I think he just won Ohio. And that's when that's when it became real for the first time. Like, oh wait, yeah. Trump could actually yeah. win we, we got really lucky on that on the timing that that evening and and the fact that I'm sober. Yes, that's true. That's true. The soberness helped. Uh, Mr. Mr. Meatball, sir, uh, what are your thoughts on what we're seeing out here and the term structure and the fact that you're right? We've been fixating on October for so long. We need something else to look at. Well, hopefully we do. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think October is really lining up to start uh, easing off here. Um, I think you're going to start seeing some pressure here. I really like um, I I think January is the contract I like to own. I like short, I like short Ock long, uh, either Nov or Jan. I think Nov you actually, the Nov future is actually the one that's going to move with the election. That's the one that I would actually want to, yeah. want to own. I, I understand the October will kind of reflect what November options are, are showing, but by October expiration, you know, it, it's October 16th, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, that's an early one. Yeah, we're still like three weeks out. I don't think it'll yeah. really have that really well priced in yet. And so I'd rather be trading in November. And really, I think if you want to kind of encapsulate everything, January is going to give you that clean look at kind of the entire process. So I, you, Russ, uh, Russell, you'll like this. I, I put on mm-hmm. uh, short October UBXY long uh, long January VIX, VIX call spreads. That was kind of my, uh, my, my, my leveraged, uh, short term, short vol, long term own, uh, own January play. I, 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 I like that one an awful lot. I've been, I've been looking at the, the midterm ETFs a little bit as well. Uh, just, you know, cause they, they, they focus on that farther part of the curve and they're probably not going to have a whole lot of reaction um, in October, and November, regardless of what's going on. Uh, but you know, if you if you if you're maybe want to have short term long volatility and and longer term short volatility, uh, you can you can put that sucker on and bit, maybe offset some of your long short dated long volatility uh, with the drift lower by the longer dated uh, stuff. Um, I, I, yeah, I got a, a nice list of things to do always. And what I really want to dig on is, you know, where, you know, where are we with respect to November option expiration and the election and uh, November option? I mean, right now, uh, uh, the Friday weeklies are the ones that you probably would start to play and they're available. We've got November, uh, I believe November 6th options are right after the election, right? Um, I'm trying to do a calendar thing in my head all at the same time. But if that's happening, and those are the options that people start to take a look at, um, yeah, the uh, actually they would be November 8th options. They haven't listed those yet. But um, they do have options already available uh, expiring the night of November 6th on the SPX, which is the day after the election. So 
we might be able to start to get some insight from you know from from just the option pricing on those. Hmm. And the other point behind that is I and, and is I you know those are not those aren't the options that are going to be feeding into the October expiration. So that might you know, if you're going to play it and they're starting to make these expirations that are available right after the election, you know, hopefully we know the outcome. Uh, that that might start to take some of the interest away from the October futures. Well, there's always interest in what's yeah. popping off out here in Vixland, listeners. So let's get to that now. Uh, is it a banger day out there for VIX options? So far, the answer is no. I mean, when you compare it to the ADV, which is continuing to come back down from its ridiculously lofty heights of August, which again, saying that out loud also sounds crazy, uh, but uh, the ADV is coming in another 68,000 or so this week to 934, still robust, still threatening a million contracts a day, but that puts what we're seeing today, 426, in a little bit better context. We're almost halfway to the ADV. So if you see it from that perspective, it's it's about what you would expect out there. But you know what's never what we expect, which is why we do it, listeners? It is time for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. All right, Mr. Split. Rhodes, you have the floor. 40 <sighs> minutes of Russell's weekly rundown goodness. Go, the floor is Oh, my God. And you know what? We could actually do that. Is that much? I guess it was a Fed week. Oh, yeah. No. Um. So, I, I you know, you. the way that I judge the weekly activity is um, I, I download the week, the, the weekly trades from um, from Bloomberg, and you can only download 20 at a time. So I have to download 20 and then, you know, cut and paste and all that kind of crap. Um, this is the first time that I had to download five pages of weeklies. And that was from Wednesday. So there was a whole lot of trading. It was horrible trading on Wednesday, though. So let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, nobody traded the weeklies fairly well around the announcement, uh, around the Fed announcement. Uh, uh, mostly bullish VIX trades. In fact, I had a hell of a time. I was I was trying to offer some guidance to a reporter on Monday and Tuesday around the Fed, and I couldn't find a really big bearish trade in the VIX complex to save my life. Uh, so uh, on Monday, trade I really do not like, and I'm gonna explain why I don't like this one. Uh, somebody with VIX just under 17, uh, somebody came in and bought 5,000 of the September 25th 22 calls for 45 cents and sold 5,000 of the September 25th, 25 calls for 26 cents. Uh, they only paid 19 cents for that. Uh, my issue with that, and and really my issue, if you're trying to play a volatility spike uh, with options, you're better off just buying an option. You're better off just buying a call uh, because let's just say, you know, VIX had spiked up to 23 or 24 uh, right out, you know, on, on, Wednesday and they still had a week to go. I don't know. They paid 19 cents for this thing. I, I don't know how, you know, if they would have been able to get out, get out of it too well. You've got the skew where your short options are going to have higher implied vol than your, you know, than the long options in this spread. So, you know, if you're going to play something like this, uh, that 19 cents or the 26 cents of income that you're taking in, I just don't think it's worth it. I, I personally think you want to have something that's that's very directional around that. Uh, it might hurt you a bit more in the long run, but that, but it is what it is. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, and this is kind of the, the kind of the kind of trade that I would like. Uh, somebody with VIX at uh, seventeen fifty nine. Uh, somebody came in and bought two thousand really late in the day of the October second uh, uh, seventeen calls for a buck sixty four. Uh, that would, you know, if we got a decent move to the upside on VIX, those would have done all right. Uh, I would have preferred the September 25th calls, but maybe they were hoping for follow through. Uh, maybe they've got their eye on something else toward the end of the quarter or something like that. Uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday was a huge, huge, huge day. Uh, a lot of late day selling of out of the money calls, uh, basically because um, they 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 weren't paying off. I saw a lot of bailing out on a lot of different out-of-the-money calls starting starting about 3.30 or so. 
uh, which added to the volume there. Uh, nothing really significant yesterday. And then today I did um, I did find uh, a trader that had uh, that purchased uh, 1,100 of the September 25th 18 calls on Tuesday. They paid a buck seven for them, and they got out today and they sold those at 54 cents. Uh, and again, uh, you know that I mean that that those options held their value a little bit. You know they go off the board next Wednesday. And of course, you know, VIX didn't spike, but, you know, it, but, but, and if it had, you know, if they had sold some options against those 18 calls, I just uh, worry about how you go about monetizing that. If you're going to do something like that, you want to go old school Jim Bittman. Uh, Bittman used to like to uh, buy a call spread. And if we got a big move in one direction, uh, he would turn it into a bearish spread during the week, expecting that we'd topped out at some point. Uh, so if 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 you're going to do something like buying the 22 calls and selling the 25 calls, uh, 25 is should be your price level where you think we're going to top out. And maybe you sell that in the money call and buy a farther out of the money call uh, and, and try to play both legs of a VIX spike and a big re VIX reversion. Yeah, because I remember you liked uh, Overby's fly from a few weeks ago. I did. Not, and not I, the straight yeah. vertical. Not the straight vertical. Not a fan of the straight no. vertical. No. The, the, and again, that, that one left you some really nice upside. Uh, he also, that one was not, if I remember correctly, that one wasn't necessarily pinpointing an event, uh, although his timing was absolutely impeccable. I, I almost feel like he needs to be Dr. Vix now, not me. Uh, but um, I, his timing was really good on it. Uh, we just got kind of an unexpected spike. I think the trade was on with the anticipation that we would get a quick move up at some point, uh, maybe even through the Fed announcement. I can't remember the expiration dates on those, but it, it wasn't quite the same as targeting uh, a, you know extra volatility around the Fed, and then we didn't get the extra volatility around the Fed. That is true. It was more of a... Yeah. Uh, less situational i should say uh, but intriguing stuff nonetheless i liked it it worked out pretty well so i think everyone oh, all, yeah. all of our listeners who put it on uh, did pretty well on that one let's see what's what's going up what's doing well in vix options this week listeners shall we uh, coming into showtime we are hanging out a uh, 7 to 3 calls over puts so puts still fairly well represented in our top 10 but not quite the uh, four we had last week or 50-50 we had not too long ago, but we are starting to come back down the other side of it, listeners. So you'd expect some of those some of those puts to go off the board. Uh, let's start number ten. It cost you 191,000 contracts to break into the top ten in Vixland this week. So starting to come back to earth a little bit. That gets us to uh, the Oct 21. So right back to a little bit of upside. If you want more upside, how about number nine? 200,000 exactly of the Jan 42 halves. The meatball was saying he likes Jan now. Maybe, maybe he likes the Jan 42 halves. You know, he loves a good, a good far out of the money strike. <laughs> Number eight, 203,000 of our first of three puts on the list, the OC 16 puts. Number seven, 225,000 of the OC 50. So right back to the upside goodness. Number six, 229,000 of the OC 20s. Number five, 236,000 of the no doubles, the no 55. So we are all over the upside this week, listeners. Number four, 237,000 of the October 19s. Number three, 259,000 of the OC 18 puts. Who would trade the OC 18 puts in October in VIX? I mean, what, what kind of a madman would have those in their back pocket? Number two, 272,000 of the OC 15 puts. And now we're talking 15. And then we're, the big dog out here this week, listeners, a much smaller, obviously, with SEP rolling off the board, 285,000 of the Nov 35s. It's been a while since we've been this light for the number one spot, 285. So intriguing stuff, uh, quite the smattering. We're all over the place. We got a bunch of puts. We got 35s. We got doubles. We've got 42 halves, 21s, 20s, even some 19s sprinkled in there, listeners. So you really have an embarrassment of riches on the top 10 this week. Unfortunately, not really an embarrassment of riches on the volume front this week, which again, Fed week, you'd be forgiven for expecting, uh, certainly in the latter half of the week, uh, some paper to kick in. I know earlier in the week, we had some uh, some lightness out there. Uh, some of our guests uh, on the in the studio this week were 
lamenting the just sit on your hands attitude a lot of people were having this week going into the fed we didn't see a lot of paper going up uh, with the exception of tuesday i think you can probably guess why in a second but it was uh, a light week and even coming out of the fed not exactly lighting the world on fire like today Four hundred twenty-six thousand contracts on the tape we are still kind of whipsawing a little bit out there so you think maybe a little bit more paper but uh, not today uh, the big dog today ninety-five thousand of the ox 17 puts i hope those blow the doors off uh, number two, 43,000 of the Nob 17 puts. Number three, 22,000 of the Ock 18 puts. Again, only a madman would trade that strike. Number four, 14,000 of the Ock 22s. And number five, 13,000 of the Ock 40s. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe Mr. Rhodes likes that vertical, the Ock 2240. He loves a good out of the money vertical, as we just heard. Uh, Thursday, 679,000 on the tape. So again, right after the Fed. We saw crazy whips all the day before. Yesterday, of course, was a full-on bullish mode day. VIX historically doesn't love that, and uh, that was the case again yesterday. 679,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog, though, there was, some, there was a big print. 107,000 of the OC 21s. That was nearly one-seventh of the paper going up yesterday. Uh, and then next, we have number two, 61,000. So getting cut pretty much in half of the OC 18 puts. Number three, 56,000 of the OC 18 calls. Number four, 38,000 of the October doubles. So you know what? No too far for you. You like a little bit of double strike, though? 38,000 of the OC doubles are your Huckleberry yesterday. And the 24,000 for number five of the October 30 calls. Wednesday, Fed Day. I get it. People sitting on their hands the first half of the session because they're waiting for the big announcement. Second half of the session, we're whipsawing all over the place, balls moving, things are rocking and rolling. You would expect maybe a little bit more paper on the tape than 654,000 contracts. So that's pretty much what we got, listeners. The big dog, again, you know, Fed Day. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. We actually had to you know, double check these numbers just to make sure everything was working. And it was <laughs> 44,000 of the OC 19 calls. That is your big dog on a hotly anticipated Fed day where they surprised a lot of people. I won't say everyone, obviously, but a lot of people and going half point as opposed to quarter point, 44,000 of the OC 19s. That's the best we could muster. Uh, number two, 39,000 of the OC 19 put. So 19 strike where the action was on Wednesday. Number three, 36,000 of the Nove. Oh, here we go. Nove 85s. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for on a Fed day. And those were all opening in case you needed confirmation of that, because of course they were. But 36,000 of the Nove 85 calls. If I had to guess, that's probably the other half of something that didn't make it into our top five. In the past, these have been ratios. So let's hope it's some really funky ratio. Maybe they're going back to that stupid we were talking about before. They're just buying all the other money strikes. Uh, number four, we got 35,000 of the Ox 17 puts. And number five, 34,000 of the OC 25s. Uh, Tuesday was the big dog. We actually got an M handle for the week, 1.01 million. So just barely making it. Um, of course, Tuesday heading into uh, SEP rolling off the board there. And 98,000 was the big dog on Tuesday of the SEP 20s. Uh, number two, 78,000 of the SEP 17 puts. Number three, 46,000 of the OC doubles. Once again, what's with the 55 strike this week, listeners? Are we in that? Are we in that range again? Are the 55 starting to look attractive? Number four, 42,000 of the SEP 18s, and rounding out the top five on pretty much the most active day of the week, 40,000 exactly of the no 37 calls. So once again, we are all over the place. Monday, kicking off Fed Week with not really a bang, not really a whimper, kind of a eh, shrug your shoulders. Not even hitting the ADV that day though. 701,000 contracts on the tape on monday the big dog 54 almost 55,000 of the sep 17 puts followed by number two 40 almost 41,000 of the d's 20s uh number three 37,000 of the oc 50s so right back to the upside list number four 37,000 of the oc 19s and number five 32 almost 33,000 of the sep 18 so Man, we were all over the place on that on that paper this week, listeners. Pick a strike, and it probably lit up our top five somewhere this week. Mr. Meatball, kind of a strange smattering of paper this week, including, I'd, I hate to say the return, the revenge of, but a lot of funky upside doubles, 50s. Are, are we in that time of year again, sir? Nov 85s, is that what we're looking at now, sir? You know, um, 
it, it was an interesting week. I mean, it's ahead of the Fed. You expect to see kind of some funky paper. Uh, interesting today, the biggest trade was a uh, a buyer of the October 17 puts, uh, outright buy of about 80,000 of them. Um, so to Russell's point, they, uh, it looks like they bought those and sold. So Russell, you actually, you'll like this. They, uh, this is the biggest trade of the day. They did this kind of near the open. They sold 39,000 of the no 17 puts at 196 to buy 78,000 of the ox 17 puts at 86 cents. I like that as a kind of curve flattener trade, uh, makes a ton of sense to me. Um, that one, that might be my favorite trade of the week, and it just went up today. Uh, yeah, um, we had uh, on thir- on thir- on Thursday, uh, seller of the OC 18 puts to buy the OC 21 puts on a ratio. Not sure I love that one. Uh, lots of OC 55s. Uh, October 30s going up. Definitely another busy one. Um, uh on the 18th ahead of the fed. Yeah. A lot of out of the money stuff. You would kind of expect that because nobody knows exactly what's going to, going to happen. So they're thinking, Oh, it's the fed. I don't know what to do. And then, uh, yeah, more of that as we head in Mark, this isn't VIX, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, prior to the, uh, prior to the fed, um, and, and this is kind of along those lines. It's definitely a vol play. We saw um, in a, an ETF that doesn't trade a lot of options, MTUM, Momentum. Um, I want to say it was Wednesday they did the trade. Yeah, Wednesday they did this kind of um, weird ratio bearish condory thing uh, that points toward, and Momentum basically is... You know, it's a it's high beta stock, stocks that are going to be moving higher. And they were setting up um, in this nary traded ETF uh, a bunch of of bearish put uh, like a bearish complex put trade. It makes me wonder whether, uh, you know, people are getting a little nervous for October. Yeah, we don't talk about the uh, the iShares MSCI USA Momentum Factor ETF. That often say so that one five times fast listeners i'm guessing not a ton of paper going up there on a regular basis let's see what is the what is the adv and everyone's favorite oh uh 2300 is more than i thought uh 27 contracts today though so looking uh looking kind of light <laughs> out there today but you're right that is kind of funky also that that put spread you talked about was funky i know for a lot of our listeners that kind of reverse calendar gives them the heebie-jeebies they can't wrap their head around being long the near dated contract and then short the longer dated one it's kind of backwards to them but in in the case of vix where we're seeing uh, the term structure looking the way it is that makes a certain amount of sense so would you say that's your vix trade of the week sir that reverse calendar uh yeah i really i think that's that might be my favorite trade of the week i'd love russell's opinion on that one mr rhodes are you down with that and then also you mentioned here in our, our chat some data you crunched about uh, historic vol sellers drying up after vol events. You want to share that with our folks? Let me stick with what Mark Sebastian was talking about there for a second. So uh, I was looking at the momentum ETF just to to get a quick handle on it. What trade did you say you saw? I they apologize. Bought the I'm, one night yeah. they bought the one ninety puts, sold uh-huh. the one eighty eight puts. The uh the one uh, bought fifty five hundred of the one nineties in OC. Sold the 188s, sold the 184s, bought the 182s. 5,500 by 3850 by 3850 by 1650. And that's going to help them on the downside, correct? Yep. Yeah, that's and that's exactly what you would want to do from a from a fundamental standpoint. And uh, I'm I'm shifting my I'm putting on my academic hat here. But, um, you know, you probably if, if if. if the Fed's right, and we're going to see the kind of slowing that they indicated by uh, admitting that they think they're going to have to cut more than than they had been saying they were going to have to, uh, you're going to be more interested in value stocks than momentum stocks. And I think, uh, you know, a bearish position in momentum, it might even be a good hedge if you've got a, a well-diversified portfolio where you, you know, that's where you're identifying an underperforming factor 
over time. You know, in the academic space, everybody loves to talk about academic about factor investing. I honestly had not looked at factor ETFs. Thank you for creating more work for me this weekend. And then uh, just uh, you guys were talking about how the volume in the VIX complex has been a little anemic. And, you know, I, I did work for SIBO for a little while. And goodness knows that when, you know, whenever VIX volumes were not going particularly well, there was always the what the heck's going on here. Uh, I did a little I, I did a little volume study a while back and looked at after we get what I refer to as a volatility event, and we did have a volatility event in early August, uh, it does frighten out some of the uh, volatility, uh, the short volatility guys. In fact, you saw uh, the number of shares outstanding on SVIX go up and then come right back down just a couple of weeks after uh, that volatility spike where, where some people tried to take advantage of it and then some other people just bailed out the best they could. And I think that and my, my theory has always been uh, a, a fewer fewer people that are willing to get short volatility um, results in VIX or the VIX derivatives being a bit elevated price-wise for some time. So the law, anybody that's thinking about doing something longs may be not particularly interested. And it just takes a while for all the participants to re-enter the market. And the average I came up with back in the day was five months. It always seemed like it took about five months before we got back to record volume or close to record volume. Uh, after 2020, I think it took a longer time than that. So I don't know if that pattern holds up anymore. But I do think that's why every week that I've been on, and now that I'm on, it seems like I'm on every week, which is great. Don't take that as a complaint. Uh, it seems like when you start to go through the volume, you're talking about how it's a bit anemic. I think we had one really busy week uh, since uh, early August. And I, 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 I'm going with what we figured out back when I was at SIBO. And then, of course, the next step, we were trying to figure out from firm risk management uh, if 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 SIBO as an entity should be doing any sort of corporate finance hedging trades to offset lower volumes after the volatility spikes. We never really came up with anything cool with that. Or, or if they're doing something around that, I'm not there to do it anymore. Interesting. Five months. Yeah. So that's 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 a long time. It was, an hour, so. yeah, it was typically about <laughs> five months, and 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 also that was going through. You know, when I was at SIBO helping promote VIX, uh, you know, volumes just grew and grew and grew, and it was all because of me. Uh, everybody knows I'm being sarcastic, right? Uh, but um, but we were on a really nice upward trajectory. That trajectory is not the same anymore. So that five month again might not hold up, but we would always see a drop off in volume after a volatility event. Just let's took a little while. For the sake of the show, let's hope that data is no longer accurate, sir. Five months it's is gonna, a, long, we, a long time. M M Mr. Trump and Mrs. Harris or Miss Harris, uh, they, they'll make sure. We said that last sure time. That we said that in yeah. 2016. We said the one thing Trump is not is not a single digit. Vix president, and he turned out to be exactly that. So it's amazing uh, how he may not have been all that bad, huh? <laughs> it's crazy. I, I'm not. I'm staying out of politics, but you know, if, if you I, like a Vix been, going to like nine, terrible Vix going to nine and sitting there forever, I guess yeah, he was awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, talk about a surprise development. You mentioned S Vix. Let's get on to your beloved S Vix uh, 2860 right now. So climbing that wall back up. I think I have a few, few vestigial calls in my back pocket i might have to babysit those today see where i can get those off but up six tenths of a point was literally hunched right as we kicked off the show uh as uh, as russell alluded to volume kind of coming back down uh, the adv is eleven thousand contracts right now down five thousand from where it was this time a week ago that's a huge chunk coming off the top in SVIX. They they cannot afford to shed 5,000 contracts a day in this product. They need to go the other way. Uh, today, also only 5,000 contracts on the tape. So, yeah, if you're looking for SVIX liquidity to improve, this is not the trend you want. Uh, the big dog out there right now, SEP 40s, uh, 3,300 of those bad boys. Looks like they're going the way of the Dodo, unless we have, if we hit 40 by the end of the day today, then something is really going, going wonky out there. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you've been all over SVIX these days with your latest uh, addition to the pit offerings. What's catching your eye out there in SVIX land? Well, you know, when you look at the numbers, you're saying SVIX should be screaming higher, but then you realize that there's this weird kink from um, the election 
uh, that is keeping S fix from doing that. But, um, you know, if you look, uh, it, since kind of bottoming on, uh, on nine, nine, it's, it's up, uh, what call it $3 and making that nice, slow, progressive progression higher, uh, you know, and on a daily basis, it is going, it is moving higher. And, uh, I expect that to continue to, uh, to, uh, to gain higher. We use a, uh, a, a calculation we call our yield zone right now that is in our, in kind of the sweet spot. So, uh, if there, we are currently just long the shares. Yield zone. I like that. It sounds like, uh, like a, something at a theme park, they hit the yield zone, dunk the person in the booth <laughs> mr mr Rhodes, sir what's uh, what's catching your eye you still long s vix and writing calls you up to something else i got some 28 calls so i will and when i say got that means i'm short um so i'll uh, i'll be down to about a half position um honestly i have been pretty much working down all of my positions i i just sometimes i feel like it's time to start things over and I, you know, the, the, as soon as I get out of everything, the S and P 500 will go down 30% because I've been fighting short with the S and P versus, um, short volatility at the same time. And it's, it's wearing me out. So I'm, uh, I'm, I've been thinking about doing a reset for the last quarter of the year. And, and so I probably will not replace that SVX. Oh. I'll just, uh, let them, I, I'll S- still, well, I know I'll still have like half a position in it. Uh, but I've been taking, I mean, I, I'm usually, uh, very well invested, like have a bunch of different things going on. And right now I've got, I'm, I've got the short volatility ETF. I'm short the S and P 500 futures and I'm short China and that's it. Short it all. Normally, norm, normally I have five to 10 different kind of macro type positions on, but I've, uh, I've, I've been scaling back a bit. Part of it's I'm doing a lot of conference traveling. I am going to RMC. Oh. So um, I don't think I am, but I'll have to, I'll have to confirm with the, uh, with the super producer, what the travel super. schedule is, but why would trap, why would travel curtail your trading? I don't understand to a conference. Like why, um, I, why would be doing it? Cause, long? cause, uh, cause I'm a lot joking. of things. I'm joking. I, okay. I, obviously, okay. I obviously get it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not slinging a ton of stuff. From yeah, the honestly, I, yeah, I thought you were asking for the audience. I, I really, <laughs> really did. I knew you knew it, but I just uh, I, I did. Get I was going. I was going into teacher mode, which is what I did. One of my guests was a little late on uh, on right as the Fed announcement was coming out, so I was able to get a couple of VIX trades off in the five minutes that I had to spare. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, look at I was out of your UVIX trade the best weekend ever because I was traveling that weekend as well. So sometimes the travel comes home to roost. Speaking of UVIX, four thirty down two tenths of a point from where it was this time last week 16,000 on the tape today the ADB is 35,000 doesn't seem like we're getting there today but you never know the end of the day could be crazy uh Mr Mr Rose you mentioned you're spooked you mentioned you're kind of unwinding some stuff uh there is uh, some potential for some uh, action over this weekend things starting to light up again in the Middle East a few other hot spots maybe flaring up are you are you rocking the old Uvix weekend trade again this weekend absolutely Absolutely. So it like yeah, I'll be weekend to have it on. Yes. It, it's always kind of an interesting weekend. Uh, 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 I, I, every Friday I could probably come up with some sort of, um, you know, hypothetical that that's going to help us out. Uh, they, they, they're not friendly hypotheticals and, and people might start to investigate me or, or have me locked up or something. But, um, it, you know, when the middle East is by far always one of them, uh, those guys are going to keep going tit for tat. Uh, I'm just glad that I had just given up my beeper like three weeks ago. I was going to say pager bombers. What are we doing? Are we striking back at 1980? But uh, yeah, pager yeah. bombers. Who had that on their bingo card for this week? I and certainly did not. You would think that that is in front of something big. That's the kind of thing that you would do if you were getting ready to make a big move. So I mean, it is possible. That- Months you know, in advance, they had to bomb them at the factory before they got shipped over. That was a long time in the works. You're right. There is, perhaps are other shoes yet to drop. My my dad said years ago once, he said, you just don't mess with Israel. 
Well, we're, we'll course. see. Yeah, P- pager yeah. bombers. That shows uh, a wee bit of patience. Is this your weekend to put on the Ubix trade, listeners? Uh, I don't know, Mr. <laughs> Meatball. Have you have you flirted at all with this uh, Russell's weekly, or we should say weekend Uvix trade, sir? What do you think? You know, it's not. It it fits with my strategy. I'm thinking about playing with it. Um, you know, now that Uvix is down to four dollars and thirty cents. You know, maybe I will buy 100 shares over the weekend just for giggles. Ooh, 100 lot. Look at you. We were slinging 1,000 I know. Lots. I'm going to go crazy, guys. And we got uh, we got run over. So maybe 100 lots are the way to go. <laughs> I'm looking right now at Uvix at the top size positions in Uvix right now, listeners. The big dog, almost 11,000 of the OC5 calls. Uh, so I had to go dig because those, those kind of leapt off the page. I, mean, I don't remember seeing that many before. And... Yeah, they started loading up on these back on August 13th. So they paid a a pretty penny for these when Uvix was around 5.88. They paid two dollars and 19 cents for these five calls in Uvix. Wow, wow, that's a lot to pay for calls in Uvix. And they're still open, listeners. So and Uvix is at a 4.30. So uh, go. Uvix out is first. Uvix. Mark Uvix is losing about three cents a day. So if you think Vol's going to hold up. You could sell the um the Uvix four dollar put for next Friday at ten cents, and buy the five dollar put call for fifteen, and uh, that would be kind of an alternative way of buying your uh, your your play if we get like a real yeah. pop. Doing just, Russell's uh, way, yeah. just spitballing here. Yeah, I have been I have been toying around with alternative ways to do it using the options. You're right; it is a little challenging. Uh, just ask this person who spent 220 on five calls how that one's working out. But yeah, I don't hate that nickel outlay. And you're right. Then you're in, you're definitely uh, defended against the last minute. One thing I won't be doing is if I do play with it again, I know Russell, you like buying it a couple of hours before the close. Uh, that's too much Uvix Delta risk for me. I've seen it whipsaw too many times, a half a point in that, even when it's down around the $4 range. So I like, you know, buy it on close, sell on the open, just literally just only going for the weekend risk. Uh, but you like playing a little closer to the fire. You like buying it a couple hours ahead of time, right, sir? Honestly, it depends on what I'm doing this afternoon. So sometimes, I, sometimes I'll buy it shortly after the program, uh, just to make sure I don't miss it. Heaven forbid, if I had missed it that weekend that that it almost doubled, I, I would have been. You know what? If I had done that, I probably wouldn't have admitted it to you guys. Um, <laughs> Hey, I admitted it. I was traveling. So, uh, you, you can admit yeah, these things. So, it's it's a phone. But I, uh, you yeah, know, I, 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 one, I did forget it one time. Thank goodness, not that weekend. Uh, so if I feel like I'm gonna get distracted in the afternoon, uh, I'll I'll usually buy it shortly after you and I are done chatting. That that's that's kind of been my my theme. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, there you go, listeners. Let us know if you're playing around with this one. Have you found a way to go about it? That that you're comfortable with a UVXY uh, 2384 when we kicked off the show 31,000 contracts on the tape that doesn't seem like much for UVXY let me re-rack it right now see if they put up a little bit more paper uh, since we've been talking and yeah they're they're hotter now actually at about a 80,000 contracts now it looks like that was some old I thought that sounded wrong old data there 80,000 contract which is only a thousand off of their 80 excuse me, which is down about 2000. So UVXY amongst all the vol products we're talking about managing to maintain its ADV pretty much. Uh, so the UVXY defense force can be excited on that one. The big dog positions look like they're all, well, there's one pre-split adjusted 10,000, almost 11,000 of these SEP 25s. So I wonder if it's the same guy who's bought the same paper as UVX, same size almost exactly. That would be strange if he bought the CEP 25s and uh, and the UVX. Uh, that's the case he probably sold the CEP so, and UVX or UVXY. So uh, that could be a decent trade out there. And then VXX, just to round us out of the vol ETPs this week, VXX was hanging out uh, at about a, a 48 right before showtime, a 47.30 right now, which puts it down about seven tenths of a point out there on the week in terms of paper it wasn't lighting the world on fire looking a little bit better now Thirty-one thousand contracts on the tape that compares to an adv of thirty-three thousand, which is down about two thousand as well 
Uh, looking for a size paper out here. We got the same deal. A lot of pre-split adjusted nonsense out here. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I know you said you've been a little bit more intrigued by BXX. Certainly when it had its dance back up to nearly 60 recently. Anything catching your eye in VXX or UVXY this week, sir? Yeah, you know, um, well, I, I told you my UVXY trade from earlier. Um, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm dabbling in some VXX here. I think it's worth uh, a look at a, a potential Ooh, short here. Uh-oh, you're back to uh, uh, which, which puts are you eyeballing here in VXX land? I'm, you know, I, I'm looking in November. I think post-election, if you look at what Vol does after elections happen, even in 2020, uh, the VIX absolutely dove. So um, November looks kind of tasty to me. Saw somebody playing in Dece a few weeks ago, and they dramatically overpaid for those puts. So sometimes if you go too far out, listeners, and you pay a, a hefty vol premium, uh, those puts, I think they're still wearing it on those puts. But uh, intriguing stuff. Mr. 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 Rhodes, anything catching your yeah. eye in UVXY or VXX? I know your favorite, VXX. Really, you know, like like I said, I'm doing UVIX. I, I'm continuing to, to do the trade that I talk about doing. Um, I look at, I just, I, I really wish I could get a, a bit more juice for out of the money calls when I do this. Um, and I even experimented around with, uh, selling a slightly in the money call that had some time value to it, uh, to see if I could trade out of it better than, uh, the, the Monday open. And that didn't work worth a damn. I tried that a couple of weeks ago <laughs> that, that became almost like a stuck trade. Like what the hell do I do with it now? And I ended up just holding it through the whole week and then uh, exiting it the following Monday. Um, so I have been, I continue to try to figure out uh, if if I can improve on this thing. And I can't, I haven't figured it out yet. But nothing can improve upon the crystal ball, listeners. So let's head Absolutely into that. Absolutely not. <laughs> right now. <laughs> It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, listeners, I was joking at the top of the show, just asking if anybody out there had uh, 15 handled, because I know I did. Uh, I was at a 1576, and right as we kicked it, right as the music hit, right before the segment started, 1586 in Vic Slam, which puts us exactly within a tenth of a point. Uh, exactly within the margin of victory. That's good. I needed a little bit of a bullseye. I'm sure if I re-racked it right now, we'd we'd be moving again. So you, sometimes you gotta you gotta catch the bullet right at the right time. Uh, Andrew, I was on the show last week. He was at a 14.99. Didn't quite get to a 14 handle, but you know what? Uh, the day is still young. It could still happen. And Mr. Rhodes was feeling his uh, oats to the upside at 16.66. So I get a winner, winner chicken dinner, which which feels good being on the road. Getting a little bit of bullseye action, so tell you what, I'll let you let you two both mull, and I shall go first this week, listeners. Uh, Fifteen seventy six is where I was this week, and you know what? Uh, we had the big catalyst. Obviously, that's what made this week so challenging. Uh, well, next week, not obviously uh, not as big of a catalyst on the board, so I think we could maybe look for uh, maybe a little more, unless of course we get this uh, weekend fun popping off, like we were talking about earlier. I'm going to, hmm, I might say it. I might say 14, I'm going to say 1485 for this time next week. So, yes, a 14 handle. I have breathed it into fruition, listeners. Let's see what everybody else has in store. The next closest was uh, Andrew. So, actually, yeah, actually, no, actually it would have been Russell a little bit to the upside. Let's go to Russell then. Mr. Rhodes, uh, what do you have in store for us next week, sir? week huh i'm sorry you got cut off at the end what would what, what, you say i said not a whole lot going on next week potential news wise uh compared to this week certainly not yeah uh 1499 oh look at you coming right in coming right in i right above me giving me a little bit of breathing room but where not no where i'm sorry where are we i thought i thought you'd said 15 I, something i, I said 14, i said 1485 you can have your 1499 no 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 i'll do 1515 just to screw with mark sebastian because i'll bet that's what he was thinking he might do that or he might do 14 uh, 1441 in which case I got uh, yeah 1515 is not palindromic <laughs> i know it's i will it's repetitive i'm i'm giving you 1551 <laughs> is what i'm doing i i well yeah no i'm just debating well I, at this calling. point i'm gonna go with 1661 so that i've got some room oh look at you going to the upside Ooh. getting all that upside all that price is white right upside action 
uh, to yourself. All right, listeners, you got quite the range. You got uh, Russell giving me the smooches down there at fourteen ninety five. I'm at fourteen eighty five, oh. and then uh, Mister Mister Meatball at a uh, palindromically appropriate sixteen sixty one. All right, that is going to do it for us on Vol Views this week. I hope you enjoyed the uh, slew of content coming to you from the Southern Studio here at STA. More to come, hitting the pro side first. Uh, Options Oddities already up there as we speak right now, an early episode of Options Oddities this week. You know, travel, the, the conferences always wreak havoc with the production schedule. But we know what we do it for you folks out there, listeners. So stay tuned to the pro. You'll be hearing a lot of my chats first up there. They'll be hitting the rest of the network. Another good reason to be subscribed to the full network. We love everybody who listens to Vol Views. We get it. But you got to listen to the full network, especially with the new shows hitting. Futures Rundown coming on already at episode three. Three years old already. <laughs> Big number three. So make sure you're listening to the full network wherever you get this. And, of course, head on over to the pro if you want access to all that other good stuff, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. And Mr. Meatball, where should they go if they want to talk SVIX or VIX or any of the other fun stuff? Yeah, just on? follow me on Twitter, at Option Pit, and we'll we'll get it out there for you, folks. There you go, at Option Pit. Uh, check out some of his archive webinars if you miss the, miss the live stuff. And uh, yeah, maybe they want to hit you up about that funky uh, reverse calendar in VIX. That's certainly an intriguing one. Not for the timid, certainly. Not for the faint of heart. But if you can handle being uh, long in the front and short in the back, <laughs> then maybe maybe that's the trade for you. Uh, optionpit.com, the place to go to learn more, at OptionPit on Twitter. And Mr. Rhodes, sir, as you're busy uh, recovering from uh, head trauma, sir, where should folks go if they want to they wanna check out your goodness? Find me on the Twitter and my full name, Russell at Russell Rhodes. Um, not really anything dramatic. Coming up, uh, I think I got a webcast in early October uh, where I'm going to take a look, where I'm going to talk about um, how the uh, how the short dated index options have been acting in both in the Europe in, in Europe and the U.S. They have uh, they have been underpricing for months now, so option sellers have been getting absolutely creamed, not just in VIX but also in the uh, in in the Eurostoxx 50 and the DAX and the S&P 500, the Nasdaq and the Russell. So, I think the big next big thing I'm going to be doing out there is talking about uh, results in those markets. There you go at Russell Rhodes, two S's, two L's, R H O A D S on the Twitter to find him listeners uh, that's going to do it for us oddities already up so if you want to check that out go hit the pro feed uh take the rest of the weekend off go relax unless you're rocking russell's ubix trade in which you got to sweat by your keyboard a little bit then we'll see you back here on monday for the option block i'll be back in the shy town studio by then all the way through to next friday another episode volatility views stay safe out there everybody you're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.